hi guys. Um, I'm going to give everyone a few more minutes in case there's any stragglers because I've been straggling a few times today already. So, but um, I'll go ahead. My name is Angela Box. Um, I work for the Russell County Public Library. I am the Program Services Librarian there, and I have been there. Uh, June will be six years. Is how long I've been there. So, I've been telling. These ladies up front, if you see my neck, neck red and splotchy, I'm fine. <laughs> That's just my nerves. When my nerves start, this is what happens. So I'm not having an allergic reaction. Don't pull out any EpiPens or anything. So, <laughs> so we'll get a few more minutes. Okay, so I don't think anyone else is coming in. Um, I've already told you my name. Again, I'm Angela Boggs. Um, and this session is developing a promotional presence for your library. So we'll go ahead and get to the first one. Um, the agenda today, I'll tell you a little bit about RCPL itself. Um, we'll go over what is library promotion, the circle of promotion, um, our journey at RCPL, where we are now, what we're doing looking forward, and then tips for where you can start developing your presence. So, Russell County Public Library is obviously located in Russell County. Um, we're a small south central county right around, we're a lake county. Um, we're right on the border of Lake Cumberland, so a lot of tourism is a big thing there. Uh, we have a population of 17,991 as of the 2020 census. Who knows if that's right? But that's our population according to them. And uh, we currently have 10,950 card holders. Now I will say that I saw that number and I was like, that's amazing. I mean, that's a lot of the county. Are all of them still alive? <laughs> Don't really know. Are all of them still in the county? That's just how many card holders we have. So, But still, that is an impressive number for us. Um, and I do believe between the new library and how we focus on um, our presence in the community has had a big um, impact on that. Okay, so first we'll go over what is promotional presence. So I'm going to break it down. Promotion, obviously, is the means of informing your users what you do and what you can do. It's not just program promotion. It is services. It is collection. It is um, outreach. It's your online resources. We have a huge Libby following. Um, pro most of you probably do. There are people that has library cards that we only hear from them when they need to update their card because they can't get on Libby. So they may never step foot in our library, but 
they are still part of our library. Um, we view them that way. We honor their, honor their presence because it is, again, if they're using Libby, they have a library card, we're on their radar whether they come into the building or not. They see our value whether they step into the building or not. Um, we, of course, we all want them to come into the building or interact with us, but that does not make them any less important. So that's part of promotion, is realizing that, realizing, getting it out there for everyone, that we are valuable to our community, we are important, this is what we can do for you. So presence is the fact or condition of being present. Of course, that comes straight from, you know, a quick Google search of what is presence. Um, <laughs> and so what is being present, being in view or at hand? Again, having a promotional presence keeps you in view of your community. Even if they aren't your diehard patron that's in there every week, we are on their radar. So that when something comes up about tax rates, I know bad, that's a bad word in the library community, but our value is seen because we are on their radar. They may not use any of our services, but they see what we're doing for others. So that's why it is so important to develop that and have your community recognize it. So I kind of already went over, why is promotional presence important? The benefits for those who promote their library effectively include increased usage and value in the organization, education of users, and change perceptions. Um, we all probably know the perception of libraries, which it is evolving quickly, but it is that like you walk in, shh, you hear a child playing and the mom's like, shh, you're in the library, you can't do that. Um, and at times, let's be honest, not everyone feeling welcome. If there's a group of teenagers that's being a little louder than someone else would like, um, there is the perception that we're gonna ask them to be quiet. Um, if they lose a book, the perception that, you know, Mr. Bookman is gonna come find you. But that's not necessary, I mean, that's not the case for libraries now. The perception that we, I'm a reader, have always been a reader, love books, but we're more than books. And getting people to understand that, that even though you're not a reader, that there is something at the library for you. Whether it is a book, whether it's just computer usage. Uh, maybe you're, they're a techie and they wanna check out the 3D printer. There's something there for them. So by being, out, have a presence in the community, you're educating them and you're changing their perceptions. So the question is, does your community recognize, oh, I'm breathing hard, your library's presence? So that's just something you can ask yourself. Do they recognize it? And are we doing what we can to change perceptions, to educate, to draw them in? So we'll go ahead and go to the next one. The circle of promotion. It's all connected. Um, I picked this term up from a lady. Her name is Angela Hirsch. She has a blog. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it. It's called the Super Library Marketing. She was based around Cincinnati. Um, I don't think she works there anymore. She also has a YouTube channel, which is the same. She does, she, her focus is promoting your library and library marketing. And this is where I picked this up from her. Um, so again, it's just all connected. Every tool in your promotional plan should be working together. I'm a librarian, I know. We like to put things in buckets or boxes or categorize them or put them in their little place. And that's just natural for us. Um, but when it comes to promotion, we can't do that. If you start putting your promotion in all different little buckets, you're not reaching everyone because everyone 
is not all of those things. So the person that is um, coming into your library every week, print's working for them because they're in your library and they're picking up your booklet. They're looking at your flyers. Um, but you may have a person that is only sees our stuff on social media. Well, if you only do print, they're not seeing it on social media. Um, if you have an email newsletter, yes, we have a following in the email world, but is that same person also the person that's, that would happen to uh, you come across for a patron interaction in the community or in the library? No. Yes. On your email, like, of course, we collect emails through Acorn, but mm -hmm. I'm not comfortable using that. So, do you have yeah. a subscriber subscribe to our newsletter to get emails? I'm going to go through that. No, it's okay. Because um, when I first started doing this, we had an email newsletter. It was not doing well. It was a lot of effort for very little return. Uh, we, would, we looked over the data, and basically, the only people opening it was staff and board members. So that's not doing anybody any good, and I was spending a lot of time on this thing. So uh, we actually stopped doing that, and I'll show, it's part of it later, but as we all know, COVID changed the world. Um, we saw a huge drop off on social, which for a long time was our number one um, source of promo. So now that people are dropping off social, we're like, okay, where are they? So we are entertaining the idea, looking into bringing the email newsletter back. Because a lot of people did. They like left social media and started using more email-based stuff. So that's part of our journey. <laughs> so I'll go through that a little bit more. But yeah, it was a email news. It was through um, MailChimp. So again, we're just look we're starting to look more into like reintroducing that into the community. But uh, as of right now, we don't. But that, when I say email, that's what I'm talking about. We have Atrium as well, but we don't use the email. Yeah, just for like, just for overdues is all we use it for, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> but um, okay, so circle of promotion. Again, by putting it into the circle, you're treating it as a whole. Um, so as we'll go through, I'll show you like our evolution into this. We did not start out with a circle of promotion. Um, we started out, like many of us, with flyers and bookmarks. And that was basically what we had. So I'll show you how that has evolved as we go. But again, like I said, if you want to check into, her name is Angela Hirsch. It's so helpful. She has multiple videos and she's great. Um, of course, it is a bigger library that she worked for, so they're doing a lot of things that we, as a small library, aren't doing. We don't do blog posts. We don't, you know, we just have it. But um, still, her information is really good. So check her out if you want to. Um, so again, it's all tied together. It's all connected. Treat it that way. By utilizing different tools, you're better able to meet patrons where they are. And that's a whole lot of this is meeting them where they are. Because more than likely, they're not just gonna stroll through your door. You gotta get them, you gotta go out and find them. And for some, it's a little harder than others. But you gotta meet them where they are. Okay. So I'll start talking about our journey a little bit. Of course, like I said, I, in June, I will be, have been there six years. Um, in 2017 is really when we started looking at promotion in a different light. Um, we were not treating promotions as a circle at all. Um, print was our number one form of promo. We had a Facebook page, but it was not utilized much. The only thing that was really ever on there was like, you know, snapshots from programs. And it wasn't on a routine basis. It was just here and there. Um, we had Instagram, but when I pulled the stats a few years ago, from December of 2016 to April of 2017, we had zero posts. 
So we were not using it. We had it, but we weren't using it. Um, we had a non-functioning website, and what I mean by that is it was built by a company that we could not make changes to it. Like we had to contact them, and then they would make the change. We could do little wording changes, but not anything. I mean, we couldn't promo anything on there. It didn't even have a calendar on there, so we couldn't even put our events on there. Um, and like I said, no connection between the tools. I mean, we did not even attempt it. And then we did have the monthly e newsletter, but like I said, little to no engagement at all. This is an example of our promo. This is the only thing I could find. Um, <laughs> and for whatever reason, it never dawned on us to download a digital version of a flyer to put on Facebook. We took a picture and we posted it to Facebook. <laughs> so that's how, we, that's how we did. So that tells you kind of like where we were at. Um, and like I said, this is the two things I could find. Uh, we were functioning on Publisher at the time as well. And we thought at the time that the discovery of 11 by 17 paper was the greatest discovery ever. <laughs> like we discovered that paper and we made everything with it. So that's what size those are. So. <laughs> But uh, this was the extent of our promo. Like, I will point out um, a day of Shakespeare. We had Kentucky Shakespeare come in. If you've never had them, get them. They're amazing. Um, this was the first time we really were like, you know what? We need to change our promotion game. It's the first time we had them. We wanted it to be great. Um, so at that time, our idea of a big promotion plan was print as many flyers as we can and go out and deliver them. And that's what we did. But that is where we were in 2017. So in 2018, social was king, because it was. Um, early in 2018, a coworker and I uh, watched a webinar about social media. I don't remember who put it out. It was through KDLA. It was, may have been one of y'all. I don't know. I can't remember. I texted her yesterday. I was like, what was the name of that webinar? She's like, I don't know but um, changed our thoughts on it. So we began doing a complete overhaul of our social media. We did develop a social media uh, posting schedule. We posted twice a day um, and every single program or service got a promo on social media. Let me tell you, that's a lot to undertake. <laughs> when you're having story hour, you know, multiple times a week, it, it's a lot to do, um, but we were learning. We were trying. So again, Facebook, and when I say social media for us, it's Facebook and Instagram. We've never, we've not done Snapchat. We haven't done TikTok, anything like that. We had Twitter, and they deleted that before I even got there. So, um, so when I say social, that's what I'm talking about for us. Um, we moved towards targeted graphics for our promo using Canva. Again, if you don't know what Canva is, you have to, you have to do it. You have to. I mean, it's easy, free for the most part. Uh, we do do a version, but um, it was a game changer for us graphically. Um, we stopped using the e-newsletter, because like I said earlier, with your question, I was just putting way too much time into that thing without um, much return at all. When it's only staff and board members are eating it, it's not worth it. They know what's going on anyway. So um, our circle began to take shape. This is when it kind of started because we still did flyers in-house, of course. Um, we had Facebook and Instagram. Patron interaction, and I always put community events and patron interaction on uh, promo circles because that's where it's at. I mean, really. Um, so our circle was taking shape. So if we made a flyer, we posted about it on Facebook or Instagram. And then we were telling people at the desk or at events about that. So you can see how the circle's coming together for us. Um, still had a non-functioning website, unfortunately. And numbers were going up. We were doing more programs, and that means more promo. So by the end of 2008, or the fall of 2018, we moved to a calendar of events 
we hadn't done that before. I mean, we had never put out a monthly calendar for people to pick up. So for us, that was big, that instead of the mom that's picking up a story hour flyer, she's getting a monthly calendar with everything. So if there's a craft that she wanted to try, she knows about it now. And she has got like 10 papers in her hand. So that was 2018. And this is just some examples. That was our first monthly calendar. And then just, I mean, a random poster with our coveted 11 by 17 paper that we did. Do you have a question? Did you stop printing your individual flyers when you moved to the, the uh, calendar of events? Um, we didn't, we stopped doing it for weekly type things that people just, people know at our library, story hour is Wednesday at 1030. Been that way for 30 years. Um, so we didn't really do like those foundational programs. That's why I, like I put up the day at Hogwarts. That was a one-off big program. We still do flyers for stuff like that. But as far as like the other foundational things, no, we don't. Okay, so 2019, I labeled that one hindsight because again, we're still working with the social media calendar, following that pretty intensely. We had an on-functioning website still. We had gotten rid of the e-newsletter. So there was this product out there. It's still out there and some of you may use it and it's great. It was called Circle. It was more of an interactive type newsletter, um, e-newsletter. So if they clicked into the e-newsletter, it took them to a landing page on Circle. So instead of trying to like put every bit of information in the newsletter, we were able to give them a link and they could tap and get more information. Um, we were also in the process of starting to build a new building in May. We broke ground on that. So that was a big, big thing for us. And then we realized in the process that Circle's not working. I did a six, we did a six month trial, watched the data. It just wasn't working. So that's when we're like, you know what we really need? We need a website that actually works and that we can do things to and we can put our promo on there and we can put our events on there. So that's when we began that process. Um, and that during that process is when we realized the importance of strong branding for the library. We'd never even thought about the concept before that. We had a logo, of course, that we slapped on everything. T-shirts, pins, every promo had our logo on it, but it never occurred to us that we needed branding until we started doing the website. So I'll show you a little bit about that. Yeah, I put a big no on circle because it didn't work, but <laughs> we had to try it. Um, you can see I've included, it's two documents. It was this packet that uh, the website company we worked with, they were called PMP Creative. I don't think they're in business anymore, unfortunately. Um, gave us, they're like, fill this out. This is how we're going to build your website. We need to know who you are. And we were like, oh, we need to know who we are, you know? So that was like a light bulb moment for us in knowing who we are as a library and making that part of our promo. That like when we do promotions, they're gonna know it's the library because it's the same feel, it's the same um, visions, it's the same, it could be the same, it's a logo, it's colors, but it's more than that. It's what you are as an entity. What is your vision statement? And you can see some of the wording on there that we had to like go through and circle and like we had to narrow it down to two. How do you narrow it down to two? But whatever. Um, so I think this may have been, I don't have my glasses on, what we finished with. Let's see. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Our two words was community and creative. That's what we came up with. There was all, I mean, like I said, this was a big packet. They gave us, um, there was a Pinterest board. 
with different styles that we had to go through and we had to pick the style. And so that's when you're like, oh, well, we're, we're a little bit modern, but we're also a little bit fun and we're also a little bit this. So that was a big moment for us as our library that, you know, we need to know who we are. And when we figure that out, we can spread the word. This is what we are and this is what we stand for. And this is what we bring to your community. Okay, 2020 people. This is how we all started. <laughs> we just wanted to share our chili with everyone, right? And it was great. We're like, oh, because I will say in the end of 2019, we moved into the new building December 2019. <laughs> We were so happy. We were riding the high that everybody in the county was coming to the library because they just wanted to see it. So for three months, we were, you know, we're packing our chili and we're happy. <laughs> and this is where we were early 2020. Like I said, we opened December 2019, launched the new website in January. Um, Moved at that time from one, the one page calendar like we showed you earlier, we moved to a multiple page booklet using InDesign. Now, I know InDesign is not for everyone. It can be expensive. It's hard to learn. I learned everything and I'm not ashamed to admit it on YouTube. Like I had zero knowledge of InDesign. So this was a process. Um, but utilize YouTube, because like, I mean, honestly, go to YouTube. Like you're talking about people that has paid probably $100,000 or more for an education in graphic design. It's telling you how to do it on YouTube. So, and don't be afraid of trying it. That's the biggest thing. Um, like I said, learned it all on YouTube. Every ounce of it was YouTube. I bought a book in Design for Dummies. Nope, <laughs> didn't work, evidently. I wasn't the dummy it was targeted at. So again, I just got on YouTube and just started watching videos. And like I went from basic to, as I was making a booklet, if there was an effect I wanted or a question I had, I Googled that specifically and watched how to do it. So I have zero if you look at my educational background, zero classes in graphic design, in you know, any of the website building, I don't know how to do that. Do I run the website? Yes. But again, it's all been self-taught, self-learned, and just through experience. And there's not one thing wrong with that. Not one. So pretty proud of myself. I hate to say it. Seems kind of... But, but that's one thing that I try to tell everyone is you're not limited. You limit yourself. I mean, you open up InDesign and you see all those little things and you're like, what is that? I have no idea what that does. But just, you know, watch some YouTube videos. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I tell, I tell people that. Where the library where I'm at, and um, there is, there's ten of us, and and not it, there's not even one of us that went to school for library science. But it's through our passion and through our willingness to like just jump in there that we're able to like move forward. So I know that's probably a bad thing to say. No, not you know. At all. Am I a, like a librarian by official credentials? No, but we stick in there. We grow, we learn, we pick ourselves back up, and we try again. So that's what the, this part of it is, is like the many things we've tried, and we'll put them up here, and we'll admit not all of them worked. That's why Circle got a big X on it. So, so I'll quit my spill on that now. We'll get back to this. <laughs> and like I said, in early 2020, that's when the RCPL brand, as we view it, was born. Um, before that, 
we had a logo that we still have that the original website company made for us with a slogan that says, discover what speaks to you. And I've always looked at that and I was like, that doesn't fit us. It just seems like something somebody slapped on there just to have something to say. But we come to find, as we moved into the new building, and we went through these processes, and went through the branding, that it was perfect. That that's what we want our community to know about us. They can come in, whether they're a reader, or whether they're just coming for story hour, they can find something that speaks to them. So that's when that was born, and I'll show you so this was our first multi-page booklet. It's small, I know. That's an image from our new website. It's just a little snippet. So, But um, for us, that was huge. We can go in there at any time. We can change the hero slider. We can add events. We can do what we need to do. And we didn't know it at the time how important that was going to be. Um, and then you can see a little bit from our branding. This is... Uh, I'm going to speak about Canva again. So if you have the paid version of Canva, the work Canva, um, you can build your brand kit in there. So all of this is, this is our logo. All of our colors came from the new building. Um, this is colors you will see in our building, in the lights, on the walls. That's our colors now. And of course we have our, our logo in all of those multiple colors. And then there's certain fonts that we use as well throughout to, uh, that you'll see throughout the building. So that was important for us. It just gives, uh, gives, if you're able to do that, it's cohesiveness. That when they, when someone on the outside sees, whether it's a flyer or whether it's a social media graphic, or if it's just a little pamphlet for when they pick up their, get a new library card, it's cohesive. You can tell it came from us. And March hits. And we're all trying to scrape the chili back in the bowl. Just trying to make everything normal again. And we all know how that went, right? <laughs> I didn't get to put the whole clip on there, but he ends up in the chili. So that's pretty much how we were. We were just trying to figure it out. So the last part of 2020, he was like, what? I mean, what has happened? We were in the new building three months. You know, um, riding that high of like everybody wanting to see us. I mean, we were seeing everyone to, well, you can't see anyone. And if you do see them, they're six feet over there and they got a mask on. So that was a big blow for us because we were, we were like riding this, everything seemed like it was coming together. You know, we got our website, we got our building, you know, we're figuring ourselves out for the first time. And then it's like, oh, nope. You know, there goes your chili. So, um, of course, we were closed for, we were closed until January, or not January, June of that year. Um, in May, we did do, we started doing curbside service. Um, we did virtual programming. And, like, I know people, some people were super successful with that. But, like, it just did not work for us. Didn't. Um, our... Our teen services librarian did multiple Zooms for her age group and like nothing. <coughs> so we did try it. It wasn't work. I mean, it didn't work for us. We did it for as long as we needed to, but we knew it wasn't. That's not where it's at when you're at the library. It's not. It's your people. So um, we did, one thing we did add during that time was we started doing press releases to the local paper and radio when we had bigger programs to promote because we found it was an issue um, getting the information out there correctly and they're busy too. So we found press releases really helped with that, that if they don't have time to like type up something about your program, it's all in that press release. And they're gonna, then they can copy and paste it and say it exactly how you've written it. That way you aren't going to work that morning and being like, why didn't they just say that? That's not what we said, you know? So we did start using those in late 2020. So at that time, this is what our circle of promotion looked like. We had the website, we were still doing social media, obviously, tried YouTube channel, 
wasn't great for us. I know some of you probably have great ones, but it just didn't work for us. Um, tried Zoom, and then we had radio on TV. Um, so we had, due to being closed or curbside, little patron interaction. And of course, nobody was doing community events. And we weren't allowed in schools when they were even in session. So uh, it's kind of bleak at that point. <laughs> I'm sure you all understand. So this was, I just threw up a couple things we tried to do during this time. Um, there was a clip from our YouTube channel we had. We did a lot of like video tutorial, how to with the services. So there was a how to Libby. And then of course we had the how to Libby when they were, uh, did it where you didn't have a library card, have to have a library card. And one of our, one of our uh, serve desk people came up and this was, I mean, it was successful. She took pictures of the library and put little hidden uh, emojis in there. And so people could look for them, but it was online. I mean, we weren't getting much there. So 2021 was all about rebuilding. You all know all about this. Um, we were you know, fully reopened. We were doing in-person programming at that time, um, but it was like very low attendance, very low, if any. Um, there were still no like community event opportunities. Like there's a local community baby shower that happens every year. Well, they did that virtually. Um, you know, school open houses were kind of closed off. So there was no community interactions at that point. Um, social was no longer king. I don't know if you all know, I'm sure you did at that time. Everybody's jumping off social media. I mean, people were just kind of done with it. And we saw that effect. We saw the effect it had on uh, program attendance. Um, we tried to focus on meeting our patrons where they were. We tried to go out to, in the summer to different parks, school, playgrounds, and stuff like that, and find the people where they were at. We visited, uh, we did programming at the low-income housing complexes. But again, I mean, attendance is just low everywhere. Um, we did launch a digital booklet publishing through Issue. It's just issuu.com, um, in which we can take the booklet now, and this is an attempt to meet people where they are, and they digitize it. They digitize it, can't talk, um, and we can post it on our website. We can post it to social media. Um, we've got a QR code that leads to it. So now when we do promo on flyers, we can put that QR code on there, and it'll take them to our booklet. So it's the entire booklet that you can flip through. And then uh, this is when we really saw how important in-person promotion was. For example, school visits. We just, we weren't allowed out there and you could tell. Cause it was, it was, our programming numbers were not great. So yeah, so everyone's leaving social media. I think I had it set to where if you click that booklet, you could actually, I could show you how you could go into it and flip through it. I'm afraid to do it because I'm afraid I'll get off there and never get back there. So we won't do that. Um, but it, I mean, you can visit our website. You're more than welcome to. Um, it is, we did a free trial. And then after seeing like the success of it, we did decide to go ahead and do, it is the smallest package they offer but we just take that out of our promotion budget. Um, so we did pay to keep that going for now. But it, again, it's something we're monitoring. If it starts becoming something people aren't using, we're not afraid to like reevaluate. So where we are now, trial and error, we're continuing to focus on patron interaction and community events when we can get there. Trying to rebuild those bridges trying to find people again. Um, and you can already tell, like our children's services librarian and our teen services librarian has been able to go back to the schools. And you can tell our programs are more attended and um, just interact families. 
families are coming back finally. So that to me is probably, should be the biggest walk in your circle, in my opinion. <laughs> and again, everything is connected. When we put out promo for something, it's going into all of those places in some form. So that the person that follows us on Facebook knows about it, but also the person that just comes in to visit us also knows about it. They're not on Facebook, but they're still seeing it. So looking forward, nice little Mark Twain quote here. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. For us, looking forward, like I said earlier, we are reevaluating evaluating email, seeing if that's something we need to bring back, maybe in a different way, in a different format, but realizing that, again, social is not king anymore. We gotta find something else. Um, we would love to, at some point, develop a RCPL app, because again, meeting people where they're at. I have so many apps on my phone that they give me a notification and if they didn't give me a notification, I would not be tuned into them at all. So that's probably far future, <laughs> but it is something we, we want to see happen. And community engagement is the new king. That's our biggest goal right now, is getting into our community and meeting everyone where they are. So where can you start? I need to check time. Did I go over? <laughs> <laughs> so where can you start the first thing I recommend is gather information set down what are the promotional tools you have right now get those all lined out how are they performing and are they right for your community that's a big question um, when I watched the lady I spoke about earlier Angela Hirsch again she's in a different community than me so for them, blog posts and targeted emails work for them, but that may not work for my community. So just evaluating that, is it right for your community? Just because another library you know, across the state is having success does not mean that's gonna work for you. Prioritize, cut the tools that aren't working. We cut the e-newsletter because it wasn't working. That doesn't mean it's cut forever, but at the time, our focus needed to be somewhere else. And focus on what is working. So again, like I said, we cut the newsletter, we cut circle. And that's when we were like, you know what we really need? What we've been chasing around, trying to fill in the gap with this? We need a website. So that's where we focused. Um, form your circle. And so there's this thing called the Marketing Rule of Seven, which was developed in the 1930s by movie promoters. And of course it has seven in the number. Don't latch on to that number, please. Um, and they said it takes seven touches. And by touches, I mean, it could be a poster. It could be a radio broadcast. It could be a social media post. It takes seven touches before a patron will react or take action about that. So we've started kind of implementing that. That's where that circle really comes in. Um, and don't latch on to that seven. I mean, don't think you have to have seven. But it's the, the key is it's multiple. Multiple touches is going to get a patron to be like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe the first time. The second time you're like, you know what? I've seen that before. You know what? Sally down the road's talking about doing this. It takes those before they'll actually take action. So kind of use that, but don't latch on to the seven. Um, just focus on multiple. Form and use your circle. So after you've like gathered your stuff, you evaluated it, form your circle and start using it. Implement it. If you send out an email newsletter that's focusing on a big program, you need to have a flyer. And if you have a flyer, you need to promote it on social media. If you promote it on social media, it needs to be on your website. So again, 
It's all working together. Multiple touches in your circle. You're reaching multiple people. Up your graphics game if you can. It's fine. Not everyone is, is kind of like attuned to that. But um, Canva was a big change for us. It, was, uh, it definitely changed our look. It made everything just more streamlined and professional, and it's so easy to use, so easy. And then, and I point out again, there are multiple resources available to improve your graphic design skills. You do, obviously. Um, Canva itself has tutorials on their site, but yeah, don't be afraid to learn something new. The big plus for me in Canva is, is you can't tear it up. It's an online based, you know, graphic design program. You can't mess it up. So even if you think you're gonna tear it up, you're not. Your, your internet connection probably just went down, is all that's happened. So, and then the next advice, try one new thing. So add one tool to your circle, one new tool, and try it. And keep in mind to meet your community where they are. So make that tool something that's gonna help you to meet them. And then evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. Set a timeline. We try circle for six months. It didn't work. And it's okay that it didn't work. Adjust and evolve where needed. And don't be afraid to stop using a tool. Like I know um, flyers and bookmarks are kind of the golden rule, but if they're not working, if you're making bookmarks and they're not picking them up, stop using them. I mean, if you're doing an e-newsletter and no one's looking at it, stop using it. It's okay. And just add another tool. Try something else and form your circle. So that's all I have. Questions, comments? Yes. Um, our library is trying to get away from the for the cost of their foundation. Yeah. But, um, and selling a post on Facebook to go to our website, to go to our website. Yeah. That way, our events are not listed there. They have to go to our website. Yeah. We've tried that. <laughs> People don't like to click. <laughs> but another thing happened, happened two years ago or three years ago. Right. That Somebody posted a negative comment on their Facebook, mm -hmm. and within a day, there was a on fire. I mean, isn't it crazy? Okay, I had like twenty thousand people. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And that's more than half of our county. Yeah. Okay. We had to block all comments. Wow. Block all the comments, and you could not. We had to block that they couldn't tag us. Yeah. It cost us. It cost us big time. Wow. 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 So we had to rebuild. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, and the truth about it, she told me, we can spread lies about Wow. It. And, uh, well, I hate that happened to you guys. It took us a long time to get, a, to get the community to, to uh, come back. Right, right. That's humans, man, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or tag you, basically. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's horrible. And that would definitely take a lot of rebuilding. Um, we do still do social media, just because, I mean, just being honest, we get on there and look at the demographics. Yep. And if you want to hit a 45 to 60 year old woman, Facebook is where it's at. Yep. Um, we still get 90% of our I mean, we do, we still get return from it. Yep. Um, but we definitely see like cases like that, especially during COVID. Yep. So touchy. We were so, we overthunk every post we made. I know we did, but it's like, oh, well, if we say this, is someone going to say, why don't you have your mask on? Or if we do this, is someone, you know. And I know uh, we did, we over, we over did it a lot of times. Um, and there, it's still there. There's still people there. But that's why we have started thinking more along the lines of email and bringing the email back. And I know that's old news for a lot of you all, but for us, it would be something we're bringing back and like really want to focus on getting that app going. Cause I think that is kind of where the Facebook, Instagram crew will find, kind of like go to eventually. Yes. I, I like your idea of going back to email, but versus doing the newsletter mm -hmm. that is so labor intensive. It is very labor intensive. To make a very simple email. 
I yeah. did a marketing class not too long ago. Yeah. And that's the thing when you're doing email, you say, well, just make it simple because the graphics and stuff right. will slow it down and then different things. Yeah. Make it. And I think the Warren yeah. County Public Library does a great job with their email. I'm one of their I'm not with the Warren County. Well, I'll tell you, don't, this. you bring up a good point. We creep on so many, probably of you all, that it's crazy. Um, <laughs> we do. We're like, oh, did you see this? They're amazing. But, yeah. But they're usually very simple. Very simple. It's not like a big, fancy, long. And that's what we've talked about. It would be more targeted promo. It wouldn't be like, here's everything that's happening this month. It would be a more targeted certain specifics. Yeah. That's what I thought. Why did I miss that for our library? I need to get a subscriber. Mm -hmm. But and then when we do a blog post, which is really that email, yeah. a newsletter and a blog is the same thing. Yeah. Constantly. And just that. send that very simple email like I do a weekly column for the library mm -hmm. in the paper. It yeah. can be the same thing. New releases. These are the new books right. that I write. These are the programs and it's just a simple email. Yeah. And I've already done it once. So I think it's simpler. I mean, yeah. we, we've done, we've all tried to be fancy yep. <laughs> newsletters, but that takes a, a, a specialist it and does. a lot of time. It does. It takes a lot of time. I think you should look back at that. Too. Well, thank you. I think I will. We've already been talking about it a little bit, but like it's, we got summer learning coming up and we can't focus on anything right now. But <laughs> but it's definitely in, in our thoughts is bringing that back. I don't know who was first. I would second that. I know that uh, I do marketing for our library, mm -hmm. and my predecessor spent a lot of time doing a printed newsletter to circulate and also an email newsletter. Yeah. For some reason, she did them separately, and they had different content. Okay. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, make one newsletter that you can print right. and digitize it, because if you're using something like Canva or if you're using something like Adobe Creative Suite, mm -hmm. you can save that as a PDF to print, and you can also upload a PDF to an email, and you can export right. it as a JPEG, as a ping, whatever. And you can insert that into an email and just send the image of that newsletter yeah. to people or copy and paste your copyright, your text, yes. and put that in the email. And then you're only doing the work one time. And it's that multiple touches you're hitting everybody. Yes, yes. Um, the good thing, and that's something we're looking into also as well, is um, Issue that we have started using. They work <laughs> with MailChimp, and there are ways of doing that. I haven't watched the YouTube videos yet. but. <laughs> Convert okay. Because I can handle convert kit and I am Easier. not an expert. Yeah. And they're about, it might be a little bit more expensive, but yeah. when you get to a certain level, MailChimp is more expensive. Yeah, it, it depends on your subscriber numbers, I think, or the number of emails you send or something. And actually, speaking of expense, if I can make a recommendation, yeah. for a lot of people, we use Canva Pro in mm -hmm. our library yes. as well uh, because we have multiple people that do yes. some of our graphic design. Yeah. And it is a really great tool. There is a free version. There is a free version. But if yeah. you have people at your library who, if you have a dedicated graphic designer or if you have anyone who handles your marketing mm -hmm. that is not afraid of Photoshop or to learn those skills, um, one of the problems with Adobe Creative Cloud for many, especially smaller libraries, is expense. Is the yeah. expense. It's hundreds of dollars a year to do yeah. and more for stock photos. There is an alternative by a company called Serif, which is the okay. Affinity Suite, Affinity Designer, okay. Affinity Photo. It's a $50 one-time lifetime license where you buy it, you own it forever with mm -hmm. free updates, and it does everything that Adobe does. That's cool. What, that is what we use. We use Affinity Designer, okay. and if you catch it on sale, it's $29.99. Really? And that, okay. that is what I use instead of Adobe Creative Suite. We okay. migrated off of that to Serif, and it, it does yeah. everything that Adobe does. And I get, like, everyone can't do Adobe because it is expensive. Yeah, um, it is. I think she, let me get her and then I'll get. I was just going to say, we do the email newsletter. We've had great success with okay. it over the last year. We use Sender. Okay. It's a lot cheaper than MailChimp. It's so user friendly. Okay. It's drop and drag. It's really easy to use. So it's Sender. I think it's Sender.net. Sender.net. I, I love Sender. Okay. Awesome. There, the lady that was right here, she mentioned that that's what they use is constant contact. You can also get Canva. Really? Which I mean, I think it's it's even the pro version. Even if you pay for it, it's like what twelve bucks a month or something. Yeah, um, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know that. I'll have to look into it. 
Awesome. And if you okay. need to up your graphics game too, Adobe stock is $30 a month. Yeah. yeah. And once you buy a license, you own that image, reuse them, people don't know this. <laughs> right. They don't. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> That's one thing I liked about Canva. I like about Canva though is like once you have that like pro I mean, you, and that's what I tell everybody. Anything that's in there, Canva's got you covered on copyright. You don't have to worry about it. You know? So, so is there any more questions or comments? All right. Well, thank you, guys. <laughs> I hope it helps. And there's my contact information if you have any other questions or suggestions for me because I'm still learning as well. So.